Hey, welcome back to Collector Level. This is Will, uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about something else that's important to us here at Collector Level, and that is cosplay, 3D printing, um, assembling the pieces that we need in order to create really super awesome costumes. Uh, this, as many of you, I hope, recognize, this is Vulture, aka Adrian Toomes, uh, from Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> Business is good. Hey, we're uh, zoomed up here a little bit. I wanted you to be able to catch some of the details of this uh, helmet that we have uh, printed, uh, post-processed, and uh, painted. We probably have uh, all, all things considered, printing time, uh, refinishing time so far to the product that you see right now. Uh, we've probably got somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 hours. Now, the majority of that is printing. Um, probably 40, 40 hours of it is just printing. And then we've got, you know, scattered 15 hours worth of time sanding, uh, applying uh, epoxy resins to help to smooth out areas. And then, of course, uh, painting. And there's multiple levels of paint here, including a very, very thin coat of matte clear. Uh, we didn't really want any of this to, to reflect anything. We wanted it to kind of be dim, uh, as, as the Vulture's costume was in the movie. Uh, I think we've done a great job so far. You all have to let me know what you think. Uh, we'll we'll uh, show the individual pieces of this. I just wanted to start off with the entire um, shell of the helmet uh, together here for this first part. And then, like I said, we'll go through the different pieces. All right, over here, we've got the uh, eye pieces. They are not finished. Um, the entire costume is not finished. So uh, this, is, this is kind of a large progress update here that we've got. I'm gonna try to throw some uh, pictures in of stuff that was taken as we uh, assembled and finished and painted and things like that along the way, uh, it, this project was started before we decided to uh, embark down the uh, YouTube path and the uh, channel path. We were just making this just for our own fun and uh, decided that it was good enough and that we were ready to, to show it off and uh, you know make it be part of our YouTube channel and our YouTube journey. So again, these are flexible uh, eye lights. They're not trimmed down. Uh, eventually they will fill just that center hole that you see. Uh, the great thing about these is that if you put them in the right direction, you can see through them. Uh, sure, it, it is going to be less uh, visibility than if you didn't have them in, but you can see through them. I've, I've put them up to my eyes lit up and then uh, looked through them. And yes, you can see through, but it, it yes, limited for sure. But we think that this is going to look really good in here and uh, we're, we're excited to, to finalize this portion of it coming soon. Okay, this piece here is a piece that will eventually uh, attach to the visor uh, proper of the, of the um, Vulture costume, Vulture helmet. Uh, however, we, we do need to um, modify the process that we thought we were going to, to pursue in order to make that visor. We originally bought some acrylics and tinted it and believed that we would be able to um, form it with just heat. However, it's too dramatic of a, of a curve, you know, for it to retain the flexibility, even with the tint and the acrylics that we have. So we're going to uh, next try uh, making a vacuum form, a small vacuum form that will fit that visor piece and then get tinted acrylics and um, try to make it that way. Okay, I'm going to start off here with a piece of this helmet that I think is, is very unique. And 
I was really, really, really uh, impressed as it came off the printer. Um, I think that this being a separate piece of many of you know, we're going to flip to a, a clip of that right now, where uh, Adrian Toomes or the Vulture flips this off of his helmet. And it really uh, sits really, really nice um, in that shot away from his face. Really allows you to kind of see who he is a little bit and see how his movements uh, accommodate this costume. Uh, we did um, drill out some holes here to make uh, room for some magnets. Uh, the magnets that we selected were just not strong enough to hold it, especially with the tension that comes along with that hose piece that will eventually be added onto the back of uh, basically a backpack um, that we are going to suggest simulates and holds the um, actual wings. But more to come on that. So we, we do have a magnet up here. There's a magnet on the underside here where this clips in uh, that holds this. It's just these side connections that we're not we're not completely happy with just yet. But you know that's kind of the fun of of all of this stuff is trial and error, and you know coming up with something that you think might work and then needing to make an adjustment. But here we go again. We're gonna have to make some uh, painting finishing corrections here because I pulled part of the magnets out. Um, this uh, tubing piece over here. Um, part of the respiration um, apparatus that would be on a, a, a helmet of somebody who climbs into high altitude. This was actually a 3D printed piece. I purchased some tubing, uh, some smaller tubing, cut it off, attached it in. So it's got a, a flexible, kind of a different texture to it. I think it uh, helps to sell it. Um, these are uh, pieces, again, that are not sure if you're going to be able to see it without being that dark inside, but um, those pieces are, are drilled through and then um, locked in on the underside and attached here on the top side. Um, as close as I could get to the stills of these, what I noticed is that they look like uh, tooth hangers that you would find in the back of a picture frame. And that's what I use to attach it in here. This is just some, um, some elastic that I doubled up and then put these clips on it. Um, it's actually something if you are to spin around, you'll notice that his helmet is clipped in to something. Um, I'm not 100% certain how we're going to go about doing that, but you know, we'll figure it out as we get there. Um, so I took some liberties, any of you who are very, very, very familiar with this uh, costume, I took some liberties with the way that I finished it. I think more often than not, you'll see a lot of the metal on the front piece here. And so you'll see the, the silver. Um, I, instead of just ending it there with maybe some parts of it on here, I, I took some liberties. I took some artistic liberties. You know, this is this is my costume, so I'm going to make it how it how I want it. And even so, it doesn't mean that this is the last one that I ever make. This is just the the first one, and so I was just you know testing it out, seeing how I think it might look best. And I, I really like this one. This is a, a uh, artistic rendering uh, that you may find in a, a book called The Art Of. And there, it's a series of books. It's this one in particular, Art, The Art Of Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, I, can, I can put a link to that in the, in the description below if any of you would like to check that out. They're really well-made books and they're kind of behind the scenes and, and additional artistic renderings um, that were made by the, by the design teams uh, when figuring out uh, what, what the characters' costumes were going to look like. And you know, ultimately, you know, from all of that work to what we saw on the screen. 
How do you think your buddy Stark paid for that tower? Or any of his little toys? Those people, Pete, those people up there, the rich and the powerful, they do whatever they want. Guys like us, like you and me, they don't care about us. We build their roads and we fight all their wars and everything. They don't care about us. We have to pick up after them. We have to eat their table scraps. Okay, here's uh, part two and, and maybe one of the most important elements to really sell this cosplay. Um, and it's the jacket. Now, of course, we've all seen fur-lined uh, jackets before, but I'm not sure uh, if we've ever seen uh, something that was so descriptive uh, in, a, in a fur coat as, as this vulture costume coat is. Um, I am going to uh, reveal here that this, although I wish I could take credit for it, this is not something uh, that we did on our own. This is something that we had commissioned through a company um, that maybe some of you are familiar with in the uh, cosplay uh, world, and that is white sheep leather. I am wholeheartedly recommending uh, their work uh, from the costume elements that I have uh, purchased from them and coordinated with them. Uh, this is not something that they previously had on their site. I communicated with them. Uh, we came up with a plan for how to execute this and they delivered. Um, they even uh, took my request of having me ship them the specific fur that I wanted to, to be sewn into this jacket. Uh, Again, they were they were outstanding to work with. They have a website. Uh, they are um, located in Pakistan, uh, so everything was done through email. But again, you know, it took a it took a little while, you know, and not the time that it would take for them to um, actually manufacture this. I believe that they would have been a lot faster had I not slowed them down, but. We came up with a plan. I told them that I wanted to supply the fur. I shipped it to them. They finished it up, made all the the adjustments, and then uh, re returned uh, the whole the whole coat to me. Uh, and not only did they do all of that, but of course they actually um, custom make this to your own specifications. And what I mean by that is if you've ever had something tailored before. Um, they take all of your measurements and then produce the item that fits you, custom to you. Um, like I said, I've, I've worked with them before. The, the item that I've gotten from them previously will be something else that we show here on the channel. I'm not ready to reve reveal that just yet. Um, however, it in its fit and finish was amazing also. Um, but back to... Uh, the most important thing here uh, right now in this moment, and it's this jacket. There's two zippers. The second one uh, on the inside zips all the way up through the neck, just like uh, Adrian Toomes uh, costume. We're gonna show a little bit of that uh, coming up next so that you can refresh yourself of exactly what it looked like. Um, but I would I would challenge you uh, to, to really find any significant difference in the coat that I have here versus the coat that was worn in the film. Take a booth. Deploy anchors. Dropping down. All right, and for the final uh, assembly of items that we have uh, collected so far uh, for this Vulture cosplay um, are the green fatigue pants uh, with a tactical belt. Um, we have some jungle boots. Um, we also have plans, and I'm going to throw up a, a photo here, um, of a picture of the, um, the feet apparatus, the leg apparatus that uh, Adrian Toomes wears along with the, the full wing um, portion of the costume. 
um, but this next piece that we want to work on is something that we're going to use uh, EVA foams and paints and sealants and things like that to make but I'm going to throw that up here uh, so you can get an idea of what we're looking at and, and maybe uh, refresh your memory again on what those pieces look like um, and then those will slide over top of the jungle boots and uh, attach on as talons and then uh, of course the gloves so next up we're going to show a uh, a little shot of, of what the full costume looks like so far uh, of what we've what we've put together and now let us know what you think uh, we're pretty proud of this I, I, I really think that uh, it's coming along well and uh, hopefully this is together in in time for for this year's um, uh, Halloween uh, we're hoping for it to be we've got some other things that we're working on at the same time um, so you know hopefully it works out but check it out and uh, let us know what you think about this uh, don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell and uh, let us know how we're doing here at collector level